Right you guys, today we're taking a look at how to stay safe on Windows 7 after end of life, which is now. If you're using Windows 7 and you can't upgrade to Windows 10 or Windows 11 uh, because of whatever reason, then this video is for you. Now, if you can upgrade to Windows 10, then you should because it's got until October 14th, 2025, which means there's still a bit of life left in Windows 10, which means it gives you a little bit more uh, security with your operating system. Now, 3.61% of people are still using Windows 7. Now, this means that it's millions of people that are still using uh, Windows 7 today in 2023. So how can you stay safe if you are going to be using Windows 7 and with some of the problems that you may uh, find when you're staying on Windows 7? Now, just so you know, it's not advisable to continue to use Windows 7 on the internet in 2023, and that's because Microsoft will not be patching or updating Windows 7 anymore. That means there's gonna be plenty of vulnerabilities that will never ever be patched anymore, and your operating system is gonna be like Swiss cheese, loads of holes in it and vulnerabilities which hackers can exploit to gain access to your computer. So when you try to update, you're not gonna be able to roll these updates out. You're also gonna probably find that your browser will not be supported. Now there's still hope. There is still some software companies that are still supporting uh, Windows 7, but the list is getting shorter by the month. And this is because they just refuse to continue to support an operating system that has reached end of life. Now Firefox, as of yet on this day of making this video, are still supporting uh, a browser for Windows 7. So Firefox is still one of the browsers that you can download and still receive security updates for, which is important if you're using it on the internet, which obviously is a must because obviously if you're using an outdated browser, it's not good. So having an updated browser means you're going to have some sort of uh, security there in, through your browser when browsing the internet. Now it seems that Firefox are always one of the last companies to support uh, an operating system because when it was XP, Firefox was one of the very last ones to ditch it and uh, they always stayed right to the very end when they give up hope on it and basically uh, see support for it. Now, how long this is going to last, I do not know, but as of right now, you can still continue to use uh, Firefox on your system on Windows 7. Chrome has also offered uh, an update up until a certain point and then they are ceasing support of it. They have released a date. I haven't got it to hand. But just use Firefox because they are still supporting Windows 7. So let's talk about security. You're going to need to get yourself a good antivirus program. Now, I'd advise you to go down the paid route here because of the better security you're going to get with a paid version rather than a free version. But if you haven't got the money, then you can use AVG. That is free. And you can also use Avira as well. Uh, for your antivirus program. But remember, you're not going to have all the other protection which is necessary to keep you safe because obviously without having patches or any other sort of security updates from Microsoft, you're going to need to block a lot of stuff on the internet, especially a lot of malware and other nasties on the internet. So AVG free does a pretty good job. But for paid versions, I would definitely go with something like Norton 360 Deluxe this is going to give you added security. It's going to give you real time protection. It's going to give you a smart firewall, which is essential. It's going to give you a secure VPN. And also it's going to give you a password manager, which is essential for staying safe, especially on a system that's as old as Windows 7. So this is the route you may need to go down because of the protection that you're going to get from this. It's going to be much more uh, better than uh, say, for instance, the free AVG, which doesn't have a firewall or any other type of protection on it. There's much more layers of security on the Norton 360 Deluxe. But you can still download a free firewall if you want to stay free, and you can use something like uh, Zone Alarm or something like that. You want to get yourself some browser add-ons as well to protect your browser even more, and you can get something like the AVG extension. There will be a Norton 360 extension as well to keep your browser safe and uh, that is definitely a must if you're going to be using it on the internet now another important thing to do is get yourself a firewall uh, because a firewall is going to protect you from attacks from outside of your network 
and when you're browsing the web, it's going to give you a bit more protection. It's another layer of security that you need to have. And a free antivirus doesn't really come with a, a firewall. But you can still use Zone Alarm Free. And uh, if you want to get the paid version of Norton 360, that does come with a very good uh, firewall as well built into the software. So you don't have to keep installing different software. And I'm not sure how long Zone Alarm are going to continue support for their free uh, firewall for Windows 7. So bear that in mind. But I'm going to get this installed on the system. And with the free antivirus program and the free uh, sort of firewall, you will get some sort of protection from, uh, you know, attacks from malware, ransomware and other things like that. So it will give you that little bit of added protection there. So by being webwise and using a bit of common sense, you should be OK. As long as you don't go downloading all the wrong stuff and clicking on things that you should be clicking on, you should be OK. But remember, uh, Windows operating system will still have vulnerabilities because it's not getting patched. And that is where uh, the, you know, the risk comes because you're using an operating system that is so old that it's not getting patched anymore. And this is why it's not advisable to continue to use it in 2023. So just remember, you're not going to get any updates for the security package that's built into Windows 7. You're not going to receive any security updates or any more feature updates. You're not going to get anything like that for Windows 7 at all. Now, obviously, you're going to still need to download all of the security updates and patches that are available for Windows 7. So if you've got a fresh install that you've just done and it doesn't have all of the updates, you won't be able to go through an update through the normal Windows update method anymore. You're going to have to go to the actual catalog here, the Microsoft update catalog, and download all of the updates from here and get them installed. What I'd advise you to do is try to, you know, have a, an ISO with all of the updates already on there, and you won't have to go through this all the time, just in case you have to reinstall Windows 7. But this is for really for people that want to continue to use Windows 7 uh, in 2023. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be people in the comments section that will say it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly safe. There's no bloatware on it. And I've never been infected. Of course, they're going to say that. But at the end of the day, uh, not everyone feels that safe. If you see how many patches that are released for Windows 10 and Windows 11, you're going to obviously understand that these patches will also affect Windows 7 and they're not going to receive any updates. So that is the risk factor right there. Now, under the extended Windows updates program that Microsoft were offering for a paid fee, people were still receiving security updates for Windows 7, but that's now stopped. And uh, now they've not given any more security updates. So this is the risk that you're going to be running in the future. Uh, so you need to start making a plan really right now to get off of Windows 7 and get onto a more updated version of operating system. If your system's too old and it doesn't support uh, Windows 10, then it's maybe time to build yourself a new computer. Even if it does everything that you need it to do, the only other option you've got is to use your computer offline. And there is users that will actually disable the internet temporarily while they're using their computer and only enable it when they actually need to go online. It's going to be a bit of a headache doing all of that. But if that's what keeps you safe and you want to continue to use Windows 7, then these are the measures that you may need to do. Once you've downloaded all your updates and you've got them installed, and this will be every single update right up until the very end, you will need to get all these installed and get them updated on your system. If you're already updated to the maximum and you can't update anymore, then you've already got all of the latest updates and you're not going to receive any more from this day forward. Even if you're installing this onto a virtual machine, it's advisable to get all of the updates installed on that machine and then disconnect the Internet if you're not going to be using it on the Internet. That way, it's not a, you know, a leak into your system. You don't want to let people infiltrate uh, your network by using uh, an access point through Windows 7, which might have a vulnerability available to someone who knows it and gets access to it that way. So just be very, very careful. Uh, if you are using it online and you do not have any sort of software on here, you can now see we've got AVG and Zone Alarm installed on here. And uh, this should give me some sort of protection and stop a lot of stuff that's going to be possibly getting onto the system. 
So that is that done. So that is the free options. But like I said, uh, Norton 360 Deluxe is probably the best solution for that because it will be a better uh, security package with uh, password managers and other things like that, especially if you are going online with this system. I wouldn't advise doing banking online on these computers, especially with Windows 7. And uh, that's just my opinion on it. Remember to keep all your software updated and make sure your antivirus is kept updated as well. It's important that all of the software you're using on that operating system is fully updated. Another thing to do is probably use a secure DNS on your system. One of those ones from, say, uh, Norton. You can use Cloudflare or OpenDNS or any of those other types of uh, DNS servers. Uh, Norton's one is very good at blocking a lot of uh, security stuff and a lot of uh, other stuff as well. So if you want to use those, then you need to follow what I'm doing on here. There's IP addresses that you can put in here, which will force it to use uh, the uh, DNS server of your choice. Again, there's a few to choose from, so have a good look around. And you want to block the malicious websites, and these will kept to update uh, by Norton and it's advisable to use something like Norton because they know a bit about security and it will keep you a bit safer uh, with having this inside here as well as having the antivirus program as well and if you really feel the need for it you can actually go as far as installing a VPN and using a VPN connection as well and this will give you a little bit more added security as well when browsing the web so that's what I'd advise you to do if you're going to continue to use Windows 7 on the internet. It's advisable to use these methods. You can also use standard user account uh, instead of an admin account, which is another advisable bit of advice I'd give you. I'm not going to be showing you that in this video. I've shown people that many times before. It's not 100% perfect, but it will uh, stop a lot of stuff. It's not going to stop ransomware and things like that, but it will actually help. Another thing, uh, Bitdefender's traffic lights might help people that are vulnerable to clicking on things that they don't understand and they end up uh, obviously will get infected or redirected to a site that they don't need, phishing sites and things like that. This will actually add uh, like a traffic light system onto your browser. So when you're browsing a web, if you're looking on the internet and, the, and it says a red item there, then you know that site is known as malicious and I wouldn't go on it. And again, you can see here, there's little green uh, areas here that say these sites are safe. It's not 100% foolproof, but again, it's just another layer of security that you can add to be that little bit more careful if you're one of these people that just click without knowing what you're clicking on. If you need some sort of word processing, you can still use LibreOffice on here. Download this and get this installed on your PC, and you'll be able to use uh, applications uh, like Word and things like that on here. If you need some sort of Office documents that you need to create, you can still use something like LibreOffice. But how much longer this is going to be available for Windows 7 is entirely up to the software creator whether they stop support for it and stop you from installing it. Again, that means you would then have to use older versions, which would then not be receiving any sort of updates or security updates for that software. If you're using really old software on an outdated operating system, that is also a massive vulnerability. So you need to make sure all of your software is kept updated. If it's really old and you haven't been forced to use it, then that is a risk in itself. If you're going to use emails, I would advise you to use some sort of online email client uh, like Gmail or something like that. And be very careful what you're clicking on, uh, especially if you are on an old system like Windows 7 where you don't have the protection. Uh, Norton 360 Deluxe will have some sort of mail protection there uh, and it will normally pick up a lot of phishing and other dodgy uh, attachments that you might have in your emails. So be very careful what you're clicking on uh, in your emails because that's how you can get infected. But you can see here the full suite works perfectly fine on here and uh, that will give you a bit of a lifeline if you need to uh, use some sort of word processing. I would strongly advise you to Think about installing something like Linux Mint or something like that. And the reason why is because this is going to receive more regular security updates and patches. And again, it's safe to use compared to using an outdated operating system that's not receiving any security updates or patches anymore.
and I would highly recommend thinking about installing a, a Linux distro of your choice because obviously the security updates that you're going to receive, especially if you've got old PC hardware that is not compatible with Windows 10 or Windows 11, which I'm pretty sure it won't be. Now, remember, as always, I'm not advising that you use Windows 7 in 2023. This is for people that want to continue to use Windows 7 in 2023, or they have no other options but use Windows 7 in 2023 because of the software that they're using or whatever other reason they have to be forced to use Windows 7. Maybe they can't update to Windows 10 or whatever the uh, reason is. But if that is the case, then you need to follow some of these uh, security measures. With that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video helps you out. Hope this video keeps you safe if you're using Windows 7. Uh, just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.